Let's go to Ruth 4, verse 10. Are y'all getting something tonight? <laughs> uh, I'm still looking. Somebody pulled Ruth out of my Bible here, out of my phone. Yeah. Ruth 410. I need to do a software update on my Bible. <laughs> That's so bad. I got to tell you guys what the Lord revealed to me the other day. I told some of you. I think I told some of the people on Sunday. <laughs> I told some of the people on Sunday, I said, you know, the Lord dealt with me because I use my, my iPad to preach with. But like I said earlier before, I'm not that old, but I'm not that young. And I haven't seen a Bible big enough that I could carry with two hands that I could read. You know, I have to come in with a big old thing I had, like the old scrolls and have, you know, two, three people, like the one they use for the drama, and have a couple of ushers bring it in for me and then open the big old book so I can start, I'll lay on top of it and start reading the Word of God. You know, it's either that or carry it on my phone. Because on my phone, I just pinch and zoom. But what happened was, I even forgot the story. <laughs> Oh, what happened was I, I was I was getting my Bible and I made the mistake and I said, you know what? I need to get the word of God and I need to put the word of God in me and the Holy Spirit said, that's not my word. Come on. That's a phone. Yeah. To many people, this is their Bible. Yeah. This is their everything. Come on. And I told the people in the mornings, I used to be, I, I, I would put the phone next to my bed and my glasses right there. As soon as I would open up my eyes, I wouldn't even get my glasses, I'd get my phone. Who's on Facebook today? I read it. Let's see what Mari had for breakfast. Yeah. What chilaquiles? Ooh, I like those. I think I'm going to have some of that. You know, and this is the first thing that I was reaching for. And it happens to us a lot. But the Holy Spirit said, you know what? And he took me, and I, uh, uh, I won't look for it right now, but he said, open up your phone. And he goes, now search for a bullet. A picture of a bullet and I said okay and I searched for a picture of a bullet and he said if somebody ever tries to break into your house show them the picture of the bullet and get rid of them shake it at them tell them I got a bullet in this phone I'm gonna destroy you and I was like I can't do anything with a picture of the bullet he goes, that's not my word. Until you get that bullet and stick it in a gun and fire it, it won't be effective. Come on. Amen. The word of God. This isn't the word of God. Ponte en el buche. Put it in, inside of you in your chest. What the buche? That's a kind of bag. <laughs> Is it like a Gucci? <laughs> no, buche. That's what the chickens have. They're, they're where they keep all their seed when they eat. They call it buche. It's the, uh, I was, yeah. way be <laughs> That's another preaching. 601. <laughs> anyway, are we there, Romans? No, we're Ruth. <laughs> Is Ruth here? What was it, Ruth uh, 410, I think I said? 410. Moreover, Ruth, the Mobites lady, the widow of Malone, I have acquired as my wife to perpetrate the name of the dead through his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brethren and from his position at the gate. You are witness this day. And you, you might say, well, what does that have to do with it? How many of you know the story of Ruth? All right, Ruth. 
You all know the story? Okay. Ruth was a, was a young woman who had a husband. And she had a sister-in-law. She had a mother-in-law. Well, all the men died. And it was just the mother-in-law of these two young ladies. And the mother-in-law, I think her name was Moat. Uh, well, Boaz? No, one, I don't know. She had a strange name. I forget her name. Uh, Naomi. There you go. <laughs> Naomi. But one thing, when I was reading, when I was reading the book of Ruth, I noticed something that the mother-in-law complained about everything. Right? She complained about, you know, what are you sticking around for? You're expecting that I'm going to have another baby at this age so they can grow up and then you can marry them too. And she told him, you know what? Why don't you two kiss me? And... Ahí está la puerta, you know, get out of here. And one of them decides to take off. But Ruth says, you know what? I'm going to stay with you. Where you live, I will live. Your God will be my God. Your land will be my land. Long story short, she makes it to this, uh, to this place where... They have a pariente, they call it pariente in Spanish. They had a, she had a conocido that was there, uh, 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 Naomi. So when they get there, this young girl who had lost everything gets favor with this man. Amen? Are you with me? She gets favor with this man. Yet the mother-in-law was complaining and saying, you know what? God has forgotten me. God has cursed me. God has said, what are you still doing here? She continued to be faithful. She continued to go. And here in the scripture that we read is that she made it to where this man found favor in her and restored not just her, restored the mother-in-law. She had a child and the mother-in-law got to carry the child. Not even, and not just that, but the favor that was upon Ruth restored the names of even the lady who doubted, the mother-in-law. Yeah. Restored the name up to the glory that they had before. And probably more. Why? Because somebody had favor upon their life. Someone was blessed with favor. And I tell you today, you're blessed with favor. Amen. The problem is, you haven't activated it yet. You have not activated favor. Favor is in your spice rack inside of you. But you have not sprinkled it on your tortillas or on your carne or on anything. Why? Because you're expecting something else for God to mysteriously make it happen in your life. But the Bible says faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. I hear this a lot. Oh, pastor, right now I'm just standing still because I'm waiting to hear from God. The word of God says that if, I, if, if those that wait upon the Lord shall mount up like eagle's wings and will fly all over the place. I'm waiting to fly, Lord. And pastor, I'm not moving. You know what? That's the biggest cop out anybody can say. I'm waiting upon the Lord. Know what you're saying? I'm so lazy. Uh-oh. I'm so lazy. I'm not going to, you know, if, if I say I'm waiting upon the Lord, I sound spiritual. But hopefully somebody will fulfill what I need. Or maybe something will happen somewhere else, but, you know, I'm, not, I'm waiting upon the Lord, Pastor. It's coming. It's coming. But what are you doing? Faith without works is dead. Favor has been deposited upon you. Upon me. When I walk into a place, I... I, I, I it sounds bad, but I demand attention. Why? Because I'm a child of God. No. When I walk into a place, I know I'm a child of God. And when I walk into a place, I said, Lord, I have favor. Lord, I need to go by this. I'm walking in there, and I'm going to get it. At the price that I want. Why? Because I got favor. And I walk in there, and I walk out with what I want. Amen. Why? Because I got favor. Amen. I learn how to use it. Amen. I know how to move it. I know how to work it. 
Why? Because it's something that God gave me. Because if I depended on what the world tried to give me, I have no education. Third grade education. I don't have no, no degree. The plaques I have in my office are, are for the church plaques, and some of them are even misspelled. <laughs> I don't have a degree from some, you know, big old school or, or college or anything of like that, but I have favor. Yes, amen. And I know that wherever, everywhere I go, sometimes I feel bad because I say, you know what, you guys are out of your league. You can't handle this favor. The world can't handle the favor God's placed upon me. You got favor. Next time that bill comes in and it's not in black and it's in red, how many of you know that red bill? Dun, dun, dun. You open up the mail. When you open the big old red letters, are you saying you just want a million dollars? No. <laughs> Pass due. Remember, I have favor. I have favor. I can change the circumstance. I can take dominion everywhere that I go. Ruth didn't lose sight. She lost her husband. And for up to even a certain term, she had lost her mother-in-law too. Yeah. But she was way out there. But she didn't complain. She did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. And God restored her. God places favor not just on a few not just on the favorites. We're all his children. Amen. We've all been called to be blessed yes. and highly yes. favored. Hallelujah. Highly favored by God. Yes. And the word of God says that man will place it upon your bosom. So when I walk into a place take authority. I take authority. So what's holding you back from activating your faith? From activating your favor? Amen. Uh, one thing that, I, that I've been teaching the Spanish uh, uh, church is money does not tell me where I go. I tell money where I'm going. I send the money, hey, you're going over there. Somebody tells us, you know what, you're going to go preach over here. Uh, few, uh, last year, we had a revival in, in, uh, in Matamoros. And you know what? The attendance wasn't, it wasn't a lot. It was just mainly the band. <laughs> Praise God, I'm Burton and his family. But the Lord said, go and do this. We did not take a penny from the church. We went over there. We rented the place for well, two nights, three nights, I think we were there. Two nights. We rented the place. Filled the cars. We had to pay impuestos because we were trying to sneak the equipment across and they caught us. <laughs> so we had to get the, the equipment and turn it Mexican. So we had to pay a few hundred dollars there. The meals to eat, the fuel, all of this stuff that happened. And we didn't pick up an offering in the service time. And all of that came out of my pocket. And you might say, oh, now you're just boasting. No, I'm saying, look, God, when he calls you to do something, he gives you, he gives you the finances to do it. He gives you the finance. And I've had to learn this the hard way. I tried to do it at my own pace, at the way I could do it, or the way I could understand it, that it would work. But it never, it always failed. When I said, Lord, I'm always going to screw it up. And he began to activate that favor in me. And he began to tell me, you know what? For too long, you've let money tell you what you're doing, where you're going, what you can buy, where you can go. And the church has been kept... Uh, uh, on the down low for a long time. The church has been kept pressed down, not shaken together and not running over. Just pressed down. But we forget the, the, the good part. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's a three part. But most people stay pressed down because money is telling them, I, this is as far as you can go. But you know what? I heard somebody say this week, thank God for tax season. Oh my God. 
Gloria a Dios por las taxas. Oh, oh. I just felt the holy chill with that. Thank God because here comes income tax time. And then you see it. And the favor of God isn't to edify the kingdom. Is I got my new iPad Buster. Look at my new kicks. Three months down the line, I'm at the pawn shop buying the stuff everybody pawned. Why? Because that was a temporary fix. It was a little band-aid. But it wasn't to honor God. You know, Pastor, why do you talk? No wonder they don't let you preach in English. <laughs> I'm telling you, come on. Come on. I'm teaching you stuff that I have applied to my life. I've applied this to my life. And I know there's favor upon me. Amen. Carlos, we travel a lot together. We go to different places and whatever. Carlos seen the favor that's upon my life. We walk into a pawn shop together, to a store or whatever. I find the most ridiculous things. <laughs> it, it's true. And I, I did this analogy the other day. Is, you see this, this, this thing here? It's a cough drop. It comes in a little bag of 30 or whatever. In Texas, it's a, one of those plus size bags. And it's like 150 of them. But if you individualize it, let's say, let's say you pay two pennies or two cents for this. Well, for the world, it's a two cent piece of mint. But when God sends me and I pick up something that's only worth two cents, the favor that's upon my life has made this priceless. Yes. Amen. It's made it priceless. And all of a sudden, that piece of junk that I picked up, everybody wants it. Amen. I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. There's many people here who will attest to this. I could have something that's broken and pick it up. And my wife sometimes will tell me, why are you buying that piece of junk? Just more junk to bring into the house. And I'll buy a $2 piece of junk and sell it for $500. Something that somebody didn't want, but in my hands, because yeah. there's favor. Amen. It's not fair to the world, <laughs> but it sure is a favor to me. Because yeah. the world wants what's in the man of, who has favor. Yes. Amen. What God has placed in your hands, there's favor on it. Amen. You just haven't seen it that way. You just haven't applied it that way. And you just haven't worked it that way. What God has placed in your hands has more value to the world because there's a holy person holding it. There's a person who is blessed beyond measure. There's a person who has more than enough. There's somebody who is above and not beneath, who is the head and not the tail. And what God places in your hands, whew, nothing's going to change. Years ago, I never thought I would be a pastor. The life I was living, who I was, I always said, I'm a musician until I die. Somebody told me one time that musician is Latin for unemployed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, I've been a musician since I was um, six, five or six years old. I'm... I'm not five or six anymore. <laughs> now I'll tell you, and I know I look a lot older, but I'm, I'll be 45 this year. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody told me the other day, he looks 60, Pastor. <laughs> I tell him, yeah, me corrieron sin aceite. <laughs> they, they ran me without oil, so that's why I got so old. <laughs> but I'll be 45 years old, so I've been in the music 30 some odd years. And I always thought that's, that's what I was going to do. I was going to be a backup for somebody, do a sound engineer. I never thought I was going to be pastoring. And I was telling the church this Sunday, I said, the first time that, that Pastor Kevin told us, hey, you're, you're taking over the Spanish church and I want you to, to pastor the, the church. That first Sunday, I come up here and I, I'm behind the piano. And I start playing the piano and I'm singing and, and the praise and worship is going on. And, you know, and 10 minutes pass, and uh, pass the time that, that we're supposed to turn over the service to the minister. And 10 minutes, 15. And I'm like, 
oh my God, Pastor Kevin fell asleep. He's not coming out. So I'm thinking of what songs can I sing again? And we're just going. Then all of a sudden he hits me. He goes, uh, I said, wait a minute. I'm the pastor. I'm supposed to go up there. And I was like, oh my God. So I'm like, dun, dun. okay, let's get ready. And I said, let's go. Let's preach. But when I walked up to the stage, when I walked up here to the altar, <laughs> bum, bum. <laughs> when I walked up to the altar and I'm standing up here, an overwhelming feeling came over me. I was like, Lord, this is a place where my father-in-law came and I praised your name and shared a word. A man who was used by God mightily. There was people healed and transformed and he preached the gospel all over the world. And then here comes this guy who's a musician who messed up so much and thinking people are thinking the only reason he's a pastor is because he's part of the family. Don't think I don't hear rumors. Yo conozco los mañosos. And that whole feeling and thinking of, you know, you're only there because. And I walked up here and I was like, I was so overwhelmed. But then the Holy Spirit told me, if I chose you to be here, no man could appoint you to do this. Amen. I called you by name. Hallelujah. And when that came over me, when the Holy Spirit just talked to me, it changed that I'm not trying to walk in anybody else's other footsteps than in the Master's. Yeah. Amen. Those are the only feet I want to walk next to. Those are the only steps I want to imitate. That is the only platform I want to be at. And I say, Lord, if you take me to Argentina, I'm going to Argentina. If you take me to Mexico or wherever you want to take me, Lord, I want to walk in your steps. I'm not going to be under the shadow of anybody else but the Almighty. Amen. That is the only shadow I want to abide in. But, you know, when you begin to abide under that shadow, it comes at a cost. Yeah. Being under the shadow, there's a cost. You have to die to you. Yeah. This has to die. Because it's kind of hard to try to follow the master in your flesh. Because the flesh always wants to go this way. Yeah. And looking for this thing. While the father's saying, I got to go this way. Yeah. I'm taking you over here. And the flesh, because it's still alive and it's overpowering. You're missing everything. And the father's saying, no, come on, just trust me. Come on, just trust me. Follow right here. I want you right here. And the flesh is like, no, oh, no, you know, that's, that's hard. What am I going to go do over there? Why does he want me to go there? No, that's not God. That's just me. Or that's just pastor wanting us to work. Every day is something new. They just want us to work for free. That's all they want. They don't want to pay anybody for nothing. Yeah, you're all laughing because you're the one saying it. <laughs> There's a saying in Spanish, no dan, no, no dan patadas sin huarache. You're like, what's going on? But when you die to this, to the flesh, and you say, ooh, it's so nice under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. It's so nice, and he's taking me this. And we get there. Oh, my God, the glory that shows up. The presence that is there. The miracles, the signs, the wonders that happen like that. Because the flesh is not interfering anymore. Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. I know it in Spanish. Can you put it up on the screen? I've never read it in English. But I know it in Spanish. Just believe me, it's in there. <laughs> I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. I no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, 
I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That has been one of my favorite scriptures. You might say, you don't even know it. I know it in Spanish. Con Cristo estoy juntamente crucificado. Ya no vivo yo, mas Cristo vive en mí. Y lo que ahora vivo en la carne, lo vivo en el Hijo de Dios. El cual me amó y se entregó a sí mismo por mí. That scripture has been with me since that day that I fell on my face. In that room where I dropped the gun on the ground. And the Father said, if you don't want your life, give it to me. That was one of the first scriptures that I actually read and took to heart. I said, you know what? I have to crucify this. I have to die to this, to this, to the wants, to the things. Why? Because there can't be two masters. There can't be two chauffeurs. When you're driving, sometimes my wife is driving or I'm driving and I'm trying to tell her how to drive. And she's like, ah, and then, you know, we're going like this or I'm driving. <laughs> And she's like, turn! And I'm like, where? <laughs> you know, sometimes I get fed up and I stop and I say, you know what? You want to drive? You drive. <laughs> and you know what? And there's been times that God stops and he says, are you driving? Yeah. Or am I driving? Yeah. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm taking you. But do you want to take 11 days or you want to take 40 years to get there? How's your time? How's your time? You got time to take 40 years? Okay, we'll take the long way. But I'm going to get you somewhere. Come on, come on. I'm preaching better than you're receiving. <laughs> the Lord is taking us places, man. With a room full of favor yeah. Yeah. that knows how to use it. Yeah. There was a, a commercial years ago. I don't know if you guys remember it or know where I'm going with it. There was an old commercial and it was for Nair. I don't know if you guys remember that for the shaving of the legs. And the commercial was, she's got legs and she knows how to use them. And the lady was shaving her, her legs. Well, we got favor and if you know how to use it, You know how to use it. People, let people criticize you. Here's another point. I got six minutes and 25 seconds left. So I can make another point. Don't try to buy your friends to like you. Oh, I'm so blessed. But Doña Chucha don't like me. So let me give her something to hopefully she'll like me. You don't buy people with the favor God gave you. It's like, oh, I want to bless people. Are you really blessing people? Or are you just trying to buy their affection? Amen. Oh, let me do this. And maybe they'll appreciate it. You know what? Shut your mouth. I'm serious. Do not prostitute your favor. No, because all you're doing, yeah, if God tells you give something, God tells you to give, you give. Yes. Amen. And that's key. If God tells you to, Amen. but if you're just behind, maybe they'll like me. You've just taken what God blessed you with and said, look, I'm going to give it to the unrighteous just because maybe they'll like me a little <laughs> And now, turn into junk in their hands because they don't have the favor. Yeah. And eventually that that you give them will become a curse and will become a separation between you and those people. Between you and those people. Why? Because it wasn't blessed what was transferred. Now again, I say, Pastor, you, I'm telling you, if God tells you to do it, you do it. But you don't prostitute your favor for anything or anyone. It was given to you so the world could see you blessed, you prospered, you lifted up so God could be glorified.
What's that verse? If I'd be lifted up, I will draw all men unto you. But if I be lifted up, I love favor. I got three minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> I got favor. Amen. What you got? Somebody got it. How many of you are going to activate your favor? You know, Peter was a fisher. And, but God took him from fishing for, for fish to fisher of men. Amen. Moses was supposed to die as an infant. But God took him to be the savior of his people. Where is God taking you? Where is he taking you? He turns a nothing into something. He, like they say, he turns a zero into a hero. He took David, a little shepherd boy that nobody cared for. His brothers were all trained for the war. They all knew how to use weapons and and archery and then whatever they use sticks and stones may break their bones all that stuff that they knew how to use in those days and David was just a young boy who was on his way to feed his brothers but what happened there was favor upon David and took him from a shepherd boy to the king why? because favor was on him and he knew how to use it because when he stood before uh, that, all, everybody who knew how to work, who knew how to fight, who knew how to do all this stuff, was cowering down and hiding. David had favor and he knew how to do said, You know, if he's been with me against the lion and the bear, he's going to be with me against this. Yeah, I didn't want to say that word, but <laughs> uncircumcised Philistine. Este <laughs> mocoso. Like he's he's gonna he's gonna see me through. And what happened? He activated the favor that was upon him, Amen. and he went. And he didn't just defeat the giant; he got a woman in the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> he got riches. Yeah. He even got the people that were around him who knew how to do the work and just didn't do it to now say he's the king. Yeah. He's the king. That even what Saul started getting a little perturbed. There was favor upon him. Amen. I tell you, there's favor upon you. Amen. And people might look at you like, you know what? There's something wrong with you. There's an issue with you and you believed it. You believe what people have said about you. You believe that they say, you know what? You're never going to bound to anything. You're never going to have anything. You know what? Your mom was broke. Your dad was broke. Your parents were sick. You're going to be sick. You're never going to have anything. You're always going to lack you're always going to be on food stamps. You're always going to be borrowing. And you believe the enemy that has come against you. But I tell you, there's favor on you. The favor of God is upon you. Time to rise up. And take the kingdom that God has placed before you. Take the authority. Don't let anyone... Anyone ever tell you, you know what, you can't. Stop believing the people that hate you. Stop believing the cries of the, of the, of the weak ones. Stop playing the injured rabbit. Look around you. You ain't bleeding. It's 
presence is in this place. And in his presence is more than enough. More than enough. Today, I'm going to finish with this. We went to a restaurant. And, and I'm not saying this to boast or anything. But a lot of times I go into a restaurant and the Holy Spirit tells me, pay for this person. You know, bless this person. Most of the time, or almost, I guess all of the time, I don't like people to see when I do it. You know, I'll sneak away and I'll go do it as I'm walking out or something else. And I don't tell people about this, but today, there was this really elderly woman. I almost said viejita. <laughs> there was this really elderly woman, and she sees my grandson, and she goes, oh, you look like my grandson, and, and this and that. So I really didn't, didn't pay too much attention. You know, not that I was being rude or anything, but I said hi and everything. As I walk away, the Lord says, pay for her. And I'm like, okay. So I, I, as she was paying, I gave the lady the money, and, and I walked away. So I go and sit down, and, and, and all of a sudden, she comes, and she's not feeling, she's, not, she's got like a limp. And I see her coming this way, and I'm like, oh, Lord, is she coming over here? <laughs> she's like, I don't want her to say anything. I don't want her to thank me and everything. And inside, I was like, and the Lord, the Lord was saying, I did. He's like, you didn't give it to her, I did. You didn't bless her, I did. So she's going to say something, she's going to give me thanks. And I was like, okay, no te enojes. <laughs> so I stood there and she comes over to me and she goes, you didn't have to do that. And I said, no, I didn't. She goes, I went to go pay. And when I was going to pay, she goes, they told me somebody already paid for me. And I said, well, you know what? I said, you know why I did it? I said, because one day somebody paid for me. And I said, his name was Jesus. And she was like, oh. And we begin to minister to her. And hopefully she'll be here Sunday, her and her husband. But the Lord said, she needed to hear words from me, not from you. You have nothing to say. You have nothing to say. Knowing Ray, I'm all about joking. Those that know me, I love to kid around. Especially when things are, are tough, that's when I joke the most. It's just who I am. And I want to tell you, I wasn't like that until I accepted the Lord. And people say, you know what? The things of God is not a show. It's not to be laughing. You shouldn't be talking. That's so disrespectful. You shouldn't be making jokes. You know what? I have so much to be grateful to God that he took my morning de estar amargado con una cara de plátano de 20 días he took that away from me and he filled me with joy and I would rather have joy and I would rather laugh and laugh and have the people criticize me but I know what happened in here I know what took place in here. And that's why I rejoice in him. And that's why everything that he tells me to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. That's why when he says, Ray, you got favor. Lord, I got favor. Amen. Ray, you're healed. I'm healed. Ray, you're going. I'm going. Ray, lose weight. Wait, hey, wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> Actually, this week I'm starting my diet. Praise God. Hallelujah. Keto. <laughs> no. I'm kidding. No, but yeah, I, um, when the Lord speaks, <laughs> you got to listen. But you know, he talks. Amen. And all you have to do is listen. Amen. Listen. Favor. Amen. Favor. We got millionaires in the house. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Last week, my, my, I talked about it in the Spanish and I already said I'm going to finish, but I'm going to finish. All right. You'll be out of here before nine o'clock. Okay. Now just give me a, just a few more minutes and we're done. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, my mother-in-law was cleaning out one of her, her, her drawers there at the, at her house, her cajones. And, um, she was going through it and she pulls out a check 
And this check has been with her for a long time, but it's a check where her and my father-in-law gave a million dollars to the church. It was a check that said one million dollars on it. And that wasn't tithe. That was because the Lord had blessed them so much. And you might say, well, here's the pastor. There was no money taken out of the church. The Lord blessed them with TV stations. The Lord blessed them with books. And he would go out and minister. And the Lord blessed them so much that they brought in a check for a million dollars. And you know, the strangest thing, I was saying that story and right away the Holy Spirit, there was an anointing that came into the room. And the Holy Spirit told me that real soon my wife and I are going to be giving a million dollars to this church. And you might say, you know what, that's impossible, you got no education. I don't care. I don't care. Education has not held me back. It has not stopped me. Education didn't take me to Argentina. The grace of God did. It was an education of this world that when we're in Argentina, the demon people were coming up and growling and biting and kicking and screaming. We said in the name of Jesus and they came out. That was the power of God. And if he told me I'm going to give a million dollars, I'm going to give a million dollars. And at that moment, there was people who rose up. I think Vanessa was one of them. And there was a few other people that, that the Lord spoke to them. And uh, Pastor, you're, you're going to ask me for a million dollars. No, I'm going to tell you, you know what? It's only if you receive it. Word of God says, I present to you, before you, death and life. Choose life. Now I'm telling you, I'm not telling you raise your hand, you're going to give me a million dollars or anything like that. What I'm telling you is, where is the limit of your favor? I'm not limiting God. I learned that a long time ago. I tried fighting it. And boy, I had to make a U-turn in the desert. Because I was wandering. I had to turn around and I said, Lord, you know what? I'm tired of walking through the desert. Especially when your shoes aren't growing. You know, at least the, the Israelites, they had their shoes growing and their clothes growing. Like, no, my shoes are getting holes and my clothes is growing and I'm preaching about the glory of God. But he said, you know what? Now don't just preach about it. Live it. Amen. And if I talk to you about tithe and offering, and Pastor Kevin talks to you about tithe and offering, it's because we're living that life of tithe and offerings. That is the life that you live. That is when you die to Maria, to Pepe, Chucho, Martin, whatever your name is. When you die to that person that's this, Bolsa de Soquete, when you die to this, and he takes over. We sing that song, take over me. Lord, something take over me. He's got to take over. But he's not taking over till you take your hands off the wheel. I think I've talked enough. But have you all heard what the Holy Spirit is saying? There is no reason whatsoever in the kingdom why any Christian should have lack, should have needs, should have sickness or disease or their marriage falling apart or their children in drugs or in alcohol and all of that. There's no reason for it. Take up your authority. pressing in. Don't let the world tell you what you can and cannot do. God already told us, he said in his word, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. He already said it. He said it. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. I don't know who needed 
realize that, but somebody needs to stop, quit feeling sorry for yourself. My God, do you think Jesus, as he was walking through the street to be crucified, you think he was having, feeling sorry for himself? Oh, I hope they really appreciate this. If not, I'm going to be really upset. No. He took the weight of the world upon his shoulders. And he conquered death. Feeling sorry for yourself is not going to do anything. It's going to keep you in the same place. In the same place. And all you're going to do is blame God on everything. God didn't come through. I knew he wasn't listening. He failed me. I'm sorry. You failed. He never did. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Stand up. Rise up. Take your authority. Take the favor that was upon you. Start changing this world. Start changing your neighborhood. Start changing your family. Start changing your kids. Your marriage. Something as simple as that. Lord, come and work in my life. But all you're doing is just fighting with your husband or your wife. Instead of shutting up and letting God start doing something and saying, Lord, what's wrong with me that has to be fixed? You want to blame the other person. That's why it's not working. Because él no entiende. O ella no entiende. My kids don't understand. They're real kind of And we blame every, everybody else. No, what's wrong with this, Lord? Deal with this. Change this. Fix. I can't change my husband. I can't change my wife. I can't change my children. But Lord, I give you the authority to change this. What is bothering, what is hindering, what is, what is standing in place, what is standing that instead of your word, it's this that's in the way. Change it, Lord. Change it. And when change comes through this, everything else begins to happen. God will only change the willing. The ones who say, change me, do something. I said in the beginning, he won't force himself into anyone. Sack of bones has to die. So the king can live. He will be glorified. You are the mirror of the image of Jesus on this world, in this world. When people see your face, you need to reflect the kingdom. Amen. In every area. Amen. Every area. And what I said a little while ago, faith can move a mountain. But as a mountain moved your faith, go ahead and stand up.